It's time again for the Science Bowl. Zoo Parade for Five. What big teeth the hippo has are actually a pair of these. Science Potpourri for 10. Would a snake most likely eat every day? Every week, Dateline Science for 10. Why are some elephants wearing necklaces these days? Green things for 15. And now, here's your host, Mr. Z himself, Dave Zarin. Thank you and welcome to the Science Bowl. Today, two outstanding elementary schools here to play our game. Let's meet them now. First, from Brandywine Elementary, would you please say hello to Monet Key Pasmore, Asia Harrison, and Soraya Wyatt. And from Whitehall Elementary, making the school's first appearance ever on Science Bowl, please say hello to Cindy King, <laughs> Austin King, and Ryan Westbrook. And now here are the categories of questions we use on Science Bowl. Okay, Mr. Z, here's today's categories. Green things, questions about plants and all things green and growing. Zoo Parade, a Noah's Ark of questions about animals. Body systems, we'll see how much you know about yourself, about things like breathing and growing and digesting your food. Let's get physical. Questions that test your knowledge of physics and chemistry, earth science and space science. Then there's science potpourri. Here's a grab bag of science questions. Everything from air pollution to the kitchen zinc. And finally, Dateline Science. We'll ask you about science history and science in the news. Here on Science Bowl, we arrange our game board according to question difficulty, with easier questions worth 5 and 10 points on the left, the harder ones worth 15, 20, and ultimately 25 on the far right. Both of our teams start out at 50 points apiece. No penalties ever for incorrect answers. At the end of the two rounds, we will have a winner to play Laurel for the chance to go on to this year's elementary school semifinals. Let's make sure everything's working properly. Let's go to the red team in Asia. Would you be good enough to try your buzzer for me? Thank you, young lady. Good luck to you and to Soraya and to Monet. And Austin, would you try your buzzer, please? Thank you. Good luck to you and to Ryan and to Cindy at Whitehall. Are we ready? Let's do this. We're so proud of all of you. You're representing your schools as ambassadors, so you've won already just by being here. So you should feel really good about yourselves. We go alphabetically to determine who goes first. B before W. So Asia at Brandywine, let's play the ball. Five. Green things for five points. Green things for five points to start our game. Your question is as follows. Teams, this large, shiny, purple, ovoid-shaped vegetable is what Remy the Rat used to make Ratatouille in the movie. Name that vegetable for five points, Brandywine. Radish. Not a radish. Good try. Whitehall, what is that shiny purple ovoid-shaped vegetable that Remy the Rat used to make ratatouille in the movie? Eggplant. 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 Absolutely right. Ovoid means egg-shaped. That was your clue in there. Nice try with radish, though. Go green. Yes, sir. Austin? Body systems for 10. Body systems for 10 points. Teams, your question is as follows. The hinge joint between the upper and lower portions of your arm is also a shape associated with macaroni. Can you name that joint? That's your elbow. Elbow macaroni, the hinge between your upper and your lower arm. Try again green. Zoo yes. parade for five. Zoo parade for five points. Teams, you're a mean one, Mr. Grinch. You have termites in your smile, and you have these arachnids in your brain. What are those arachnids? Brandywine? Maggots. Not maggots, no. Whitehall, what are the arachnids that the Grinch has in his brain? Cockroaches. Spiders. Spiders are arachnids, OK? Those other things you mentioned are pretty nasty, too. I wouldn't want them in my brain, either. Try again. Green. Let's get physical for ten, five. Get physical for five points, teams. Only the U.S. government uses more of this gas than Macy's department store, which uses it to fill its big balloons for the Thanksgiving Day Parade. Name the gas, Brandywine. Helium. Helium. Again? Helium. Helium. Helium is right. Yes, good. Go. Yay. Um, yes, ma'am. Science potpourri for five. Science potpourri for five points. Teams. Who knew that Santa's ungulates were such a lethal bunch? 
because back in 1979, the songwriter Randy Brooks wrote, Grandma got run over by a what? Whitehall? Reindeer. A reindeer, that's right. Imagine that, reindeer. Mm, poor grandma. Go green. Body systems for five. Body systems for five points. Teams, your question is, these pigmented long threads that grow out of our skin surprisingly are very good for making fertilizer and of course wigs brandywine hair hair that's right our hair is very good as a fertilizer who knew that go red um dateline signs for five Dateline for five points. Teams, the governor of Maryland recently has put large portions of Chesapeake Bay off limits to harvesters because they're trying to capture what bivalves that live there that are now just a fraction of what they once were. All right, Whitehall. Oysters. Oysters, that's right. There is a moratorium on oyster harvesting in large portions of the bay to try to bring that population back. All right, score 65 for Whitehall, 60 for Brandywine. Still a close game. Austin, to you. Green things for 10. Green things, 10 points. Teams, unlike most fruits, these of the oak tree are considered indehiscent because they don't split apart when they mature. What is the fruit of the oak tree known as, Whitehall? Acorns. Acorns, that's right. Acorns don't split. They stay whole when they fall onto the ground and then germinate and grow into new oak trees. Nicely done, young man. Go green. Let's get physical for 10. Let's get physical for 10 points. Teams, the Twilight series. We all know the new moon is the newest one, but there was another edition of the Twilight series, the title of which is a celestial event in which one planetary body obscures another. What is that phenomenon called when one planetary body gets in front of another one? Asia. Orbiting. Not orbiting. Good try. Whitehall. One planetary body obscures another. One of the titles of the Twilight series, Eclipse, Eclipse, like a solar or a lunar eclipse. Try, try again, green. Super Aid for 10. Super Aid for 10 points. Teams, birds like pelicans and egrets and parakeets were once hunted almost to extinction, not because for, they were being shot for food, but because they were covered with very beautiful what's? Whitehall? Feathers. Feathers, that's right. They were using their feathers to make hats. And of course, that was now outlawed, and those birds are starting to make something of a comeback. All right, the buzzer is rung. We've come to the end of the first round. Our score is Brandywine 60, Whitehall 85. We'll be back with round two in just a moment. Don't go away. And welcome back to Science. Well, thank you very much for spending part of your day with us. We hope you're enjoying this game. Two great elementary schools playing today, and let's find out about them. We mentioned at the top of the show that Whitehall has never been here ever in our 24-year history. And Brandywine, though, certainly has been here before. We always welcome your teams because you always send us great teams. Miss Losey is a great supporter down there. Tell us about Brandywine, Asia. In addition to you three VIPs, tell us who your principal is. Our principal is Mr. Cattell. Okay, and it's out there. He's been a principal for a long time down there, and I know how much he supports Science Bowl. And in addition to Miss Losey, uh, tell us who else was part of this team. Did you have any alternates on your team, Asia? Yes, we had Raven Salloway, Keila Scott, and Joseph Brooks. And we're going to bring all them out with Miss Losey in a few moments so you can meet them all, because I know you've been practicing a long time to get ready for today. You're all wearing matching shirts. Can you just sit, sit up a little more so we can see what it says there? Brandywine Elementary. Look at that. You've got a flask and a microscope on there. Science Bowl, those are really nice shirts. Thank you for wearing those today. Who made them for you, Asia? Um, Miss Losey ordered them. Did she? Wow, that, was, that just tells you what a great lady she is and a great teacher and role model. Asia, tell me about yourself. What do you want to do someday? Um, when I grow up, I want to be a pediatrician. Pediatrician. And I know we were talking before, and Monet, you also want to be a pediatrician. Do you have younger brothers and sisters at yes, home? Yes, I have one younger brother. All right, so you're getting a little practice in right now. What do you do in your spare time, Asia? Um, in my spare time, I play the trumpet, cheerlead, and sometimes I draw and read. Wonderful. You play the trumpet in a school band or orchestra, do you? Yes. That's great. And Monet, you're also a fellow pediatrician to be, fellow musician, what instrument do you play? I play the clarinet. Yeah, and you've played it for a little while now. Um, what do you like best about your instrument? Well, the thing I like best about it is that 
we get to learn more notes, and the more notes we learn, the more music we can play. Absolutely right. And pretty soon you'll be able to tickle the licorice stick, as it's called, on your own and play something on your own. You may be able to do that already. Uh, it's nice to have you with us today. And the only non-pediatrician to be is Soraya over there. This young lady is interested in cooking and wants to be a chef, but she really doesn't cook right now. Is that right? Yes. How'd you get interested in it? Well, my mom can cook really good. I like her cooking, and I also <laughs> like to watch cooking channels. Yeah. That's how it interests me. That's how a lot of things start. And what a nice thing to say about your mom. And you've got a great teacher right there. Just stand next to her and remember everything she does and write things down, Soraya. Good to have you with us, too. Go over to Whitehall, first time ever. A fairly new school in Prince George's County, just a couple of years, years old. Austin, tell us who your principal is. My principal is Mr. Campbell. Yes, and I've met him a number of times. He's a really dynamic guy, and I know how much behind you he is. And the sponsor of your team? Mr. Carnes. Mr. Carnes, and he's been here. He's helped us judge. He's found out what this game is about to better prepare you, and you're doing very well today. Austin, any alternates on your team? I have John Lewis and Evan Hansen. Right, and those two gentlemen are out there in the wings, and we'll bring them out in just a few moments along with Mr. Carnes. What do you like best about Whitehall, Austin? I like the teachers and the students. Yeah, boy, that, that's, that's, that's it. That's the whole school, isn't it? And uh, tell me about your aspirations. What do you want to do when you get older? I want to be a professional soccer player. Yeah, and I know you play soccer now with your friends. And what other sports do you play? I play baseball. And uh, sometimes I play basketball. And basketball, all right. You're a good student and you're a good captain. You keep up your good work over there. Ryan, nice to have you here, a young man who does a lot. You also are a baseball player. And you play right field and catch, correct? What team do you play for? Uh, I play for the county Bowie boys, or uh, county Bowie team. That's great. And how long have you played on the team, Ryan? Uh, about three years. About three years, all right. And uh, you also play an instrument. What instrument do you play? I play the viola. Viola. And uh, what else do you do in your spare time? Uh, my spare time, I usually watch TV, go outdoors, or just play my video games. That's great. And what do you aspire to do today? Of course, you'd like to be on a baseball team someday. If you had your pick, would you play with Jeter on the Yankees, or where would you go? Uh, I'd play with the Orioles. The or All right, a hometown guy over there. That's what we need. All right, keep up your good uh, work there on the field and in the classroom, Ryan. Cindy, nice to have you here. Young lady who has already started into her career as an author. Now, tell us what you did when you were on vacation. Well, when I was on vacation, we had this really spooky hotel room. And it was really late. It was about 12 midnight. So there's nothing else to do. So I just decided, why not write a book? And I wrote my own book, and it's called The Room. And the epilogue is called Santa in Room 1526. Oh, I'm scared already. I mean, I love how you talk. You know, you talk like someone who writes. So what a nice talent you have over there. I hope you continue that, and uh, I like having you on the game today. Keep up your good work. Let's get back into the game. Whitehall 85, Brandywine 60. Last great answer came from the green team. Lots of big questions left. Austin, where to? Science potpourri for 10. Science potpourri for 10 points. Teams, Activia, which they promote on television all the time, is a yogurt that contains probiotics, which is another way of saying that those yogurts contain active cultures of what? What lives in the yogurt, Brandywine? Um, bacteria. No, it's not bacteria. Um, yes, ma'am. I don't know. Bacteria. Bacteria is absolutely right, Soraya. Okay, Asia, make sure you defer to your teammates if they have an idea there. Good answer. Go red. Um, Dateline Science for 10. Dateline Science for 10 points. Teams, what same word means the sound that sparrows make as they teach each other how to sing and the microblogging service and social networking that we do on our cell phones. What same word, Asia? Twitter. Twitter. You got that right. Nicely done. Go. Red. Um, Zoo Parade for 15. Zoo Parade for 15 points. Teams, what cuddly Australian marsupials smell like cough drops because all they eat is eucalyptus leaves? Whitehall? Koalas. Koalas, that's right. And those poor things are endangered over there. They're threatened because of all the fires and because people are tearing down their eucalyptus trees. Go green. Cactus. 
Green things for 15. Green things for 15 points. Teams, your question. Back in 19, excuse me, in 1779, the scientist John Engerhaus noticed that aquatic plants only produce this gas in the light, but not in the dark. What gas do they make? Whitehall. Oxygen. You got that right. Oxygen in that photosynthetic process that they all go through. Good. Green. Let's get physical for 15. Get physical for 15 points. Teams, Aristotle once said that he could move the world if he had one of these simple machines that was long enough. What kind of simple machine that looks like a seesaw did he hope to get? It's a lever, a lever. Give me a lever, a long enough one, and I can move the world. Green. Body systems for 15. Body systems for 15 points. Teams, fear bordering on panic, like in the book that Cindy is writing, and we see in horror movies, often causes people to break out in a cold what? Whitehall. Sweat. Sweat, that's right, a cold sweat. You know you're scared. You know. Go green. Science potpourri for 15. Potpourri for 15 points. Team, some of you read about her in the newspaper. She was a nine-year-old girl from Annandale. She came here to Laurel, Maryland to Dinosaur Park, and on her first try, she found the bone of a 100-million-year-old dinosaur. You might say that she is now an amateur what? What kind of person studies and finds dinosaur bones? She's an amateur what, Asia? Paleontologist. You got that right, an amateur paleontologist and only nine years old. Good for her. Go. <laughs> Green things for 20. Green things for 20 points. Teams, your question is as follows. In the supermarket, lettuce and spinach are called vegetables. But botanically speaking, lettuce and spinach are simply these. Whitehall. Leaves. Leaves, that's all. They're just leaves. You're eating leaves. Good. Go. Get physical for 20 points. Teams, if you've got really curly hair and you want to straighten it, you put on something called sodium hydroxide. That straightens your hair. If you want to have really white teeth, you use a bleaching agent that is known as hydrogen what? Asia. Hydrogen fluoride. Good try. Not hydrogen fluoride. Good try. To whiten your teeth, you use hydrogen what? It's a bleaching agent. Can you please repeat, repeat the question? The first part of the question was kind of contrasting. To straighten hair, you use a chemical, a relaxing agent called sodium hydroxide. But to whiten your teeth, you use a bleaching agent known as hydrogen what? Peroxide, hydrogen peroxide. It's the same thing you can put on cuts as a disinfectant or an antiseptic. Try again green. Zuparade for 20. Zuparade for 20 points. Teams, listen to this. Sounds like a complicated question, but it is not. Hemimetabolism is a word that is identical to another term. The incomplete version of this developmental process when an insect misses the pupil stage is known as incomplete what? Asia. Incomplete metaphor? Ooh. Oh, wait. Metamorphosis? That's it. That's what I want to hear. Metamorphosis. I knew it was in there somewhere. Good recovery. Go. Um, Dateline science for 15. Dateline for 15 points. Teams, President Obama has recently released these controversial kinds of cells that are found in human embryos so that scientists can experiment on them in the hopes of curing diseases. What are these kinds of cells called for 15 points? Brandywine. Red blood cells. Not red blood cells. What kind of controversial cells found in human embryos has the president now released to scientists to experiment on? Whitehall. White blood cells. Stem cells. Stem cells. Stem cell research. Very controversial. Red. Um. Science potpourri for 20. Potpourri for 20 points. Teams. Most of our hard drives that we have are measured in gigs. Gigs is a shortened version of what word? Whitehall. Gigabyte. Gigabyte. That's what I want to hear. Good. Go. Re agreed. Body systems for 20. Body systems for 20 points, teams. Huh. It turns out that only 8% of human beings actually have this normal, so-called normal body temperature. What is normal body temperature? Asia. 
98.6. You got that right, 98.6, but it seems like very few of us, less than 1 in 10, actually have that most of the time. All right, look at the score. Brandy won 135, Whitehall 170, close game, advantage red. Asia. Science Potpourri for 25. Science Potpourri for 25. The big one in that category, teams, listen carefully. One of the best-selling books last year for children was called Don't Smile at a Monkey. Why? Because if you grin at a monkey, he will interpret your grin as an aggressive stance. All the book is filled with things you should never do with animals because it could hurt you. You should never pet, for instance, a duckbill platypus because it is the only mammal that is this. Whitehall, can you tell me for 25 points, what the problem is with that duckbill platypus. Austin. It's venomous. It is venomous, absolutely right. If you pet it, you can get stung. Only mammal so endowed. Good, green. Dateline science for 20. Dateline science for 20 points, teams. Bill Gates, the multi-billionaire, has a strange idea. He wants to pump cold water from the bottom of the Gulf of Mexico up to the surface so that he can prevent what tropical storms from forming in the Gulf of Mexico. Brandywine. Hurricanes. You got that right. See if we can stop the hurricanes, if we can nip them in the bud. Good. Red. Um, green things for 25. Green things for 25. Green things for 25 points. Teams, we all know about tropical rainforests, but there are also temperate rainforests, like the ones in Northern California, where most of the trees are the opposite of deciduous trees, meaning they're what kinds of trees? Brandywine. I'll let Monet Monet? Cedar trees. Cedar trees? Like, oh, no, mm, so judges? Not quite. Can you give us more information? Um, Pine trees? No, the No. Give us what the group of trees is known as. Let's try Whitehall. Whitehall, temperate rainforests are populated mostly with trees that are the opposite of deciduous trees. What kinds of trees are they? Pine trees? No, both of you were saying pine. We wanted to hear either evergreen or conifers or carnivorous. Try again red. Um, yes, ma'am. Less than a minute and a half. Zoo parade for 25. Zoo parade for 25. The big one in that category, teams on the African plain, wildebeest, zebras, and gazelles, they all graze on the same grassland. They can do that because each of those species eats different parts of the grass, some the top, some the middle, some the bottom. You might say that each of them has carved out their own what? N-initialed little ecosystem to survive. N-initialed. Niche. Niche. Go red. Red. Asia, pick. Um. Let's get phys physical for 25. For 25 points and let's get physical teams. At sea level, we humans experience this as 14.7 pounds per square inch. What is that that we experience at that level at sea level? Whitehall. Water pressure? Not water pressure, good try. Brandywine, at sea level, we humans experience this at 14.7 pounds per square inch. Air pressure? Air pressure is what I want to hear. Yes, indeed, good, go. Um, Dateline science for 25. Dateline for 25 points, teams. Of course, the most famous scientist of all was Albert Einstein, but the most important book ever written about science was called Principia. It was written by this scientist who we associate mostly with his laws of motion. Can you tell me who he is for 25 points? Who is he? Someone may ring in. Whitehall? You got that right, Isaac Newton. With that, Whitehall, you are today's winner. We'll be back with a wrap-up in just a moment. Don't go away. And welcome back. You could almost hear the Canis knocking in here and the sound of fingernails being bitten. It came down to the very last question. What a great game today. We are proud of all six of our players. What a game you gave us. Our final tally, Brandy won 180, Whitehall 220. Whitehall, your premier appearance means you won. You're going on to the next round. Cindy and Austin and Ryan, congratulations. And say hello to their alternates back there, Andre and Evan and John, Mr. Carnes and Miss Hanson. Thank you all for being here today. Brandy won, let's see some smiles. You came back from nowhere. You almost won this game. Monet and Asia and Sorayo. You guys are wonderful. Just you played beautifully today. And the alternates, we have Joseph and Raven and Keela and Miss Losey. I know you're proud of this team, and thank you for those great shirts. I want one, too. Audience, thanks for being here. We'll see you next time on Science Ball. Bye now.